Customer surveys. Ugh. Do you hate writing them? I remember a long time ago, every year at the end of my CSA, I would feel like it's time to write my customer survey and send it out. And I was always scared to do it because I knew that there would be people who would have negative things to say about my CSA. And I just didn't want to read those comments. And then I learned that there's a difference between a good survey and a great survey. And that's what I want to share with you in today's episode. How do you actually write customer survey questions that will give you information you really need and that will move the needle forward on your business? That's what we're going to talk about today. Let's get started. Hey there, this is Corinna Bench and welcome to the My Digital Farmer podcast. In today's market, it's not enough to just grow your product. You've got to know how to sell it, too. Welcome to the My Digital Farmer podcast, where we reveal online marketing strategies and tips to help farmers like you get better and more confident at marketing. Learn how to find more customers, increase your sales, and build a strong brand for your farm. Let's start the show. Hey, what's up, my friends? Welcome to episode 32 of the My Digital Farmer podcast. I'm your host, Corinna Bench from My Digital Farmer. I'm also one of the farmers at Shared Legacy Farms out in Elmore, Ohio. I am so glad that you're here with me today. Hey, if you haven't done so already, would you please hit the subscribe button on your podcast player to make sure that you get my latest episode every Wednesday? Sure would appreciate that. If you're enjoying the show, um, make sure you do that. Today's episode is going to be a really, really good one. It was actually one of the first topics I talked about in my private Facebook group for CSA Farmers where I teach all about marketing. If you don't know about that group, by the way, it's called CSA Marketing Discussion. So just do a search for that on Facebook and ask to join. It's got about 1,700 members, farmers um, in there. And we, we specifically talk about CSA marketing questions in there. So, um, But many years ago, when I first started that group, I started by talking about today's topic, which is how to write a really great customer survey so that you actually get the intel that you want that can be helpful and valuable for you as a marketer. And I remember that that particular episode went really nuts. A lot of people resonated with it and um, took a lot of the questions that I shared in that episode and put them on their own end of your surveys. And so I'm like, you know what? I haven't done an episode about surveys yet. And I feel like this is the right time to do it because we're in November. This is going to be released in November. And that's kind of sort of the end of many of your um, CSA seasons. Um, And I thought this is definitely a timely topic. So today I want to teach you seven tips to writing a better customer survey. To get started, I want to tell you a story, actually use an illustration. I want you to take a look at the FedEx logo. Pull it up on your phone, do a search for it. In fact, I'll put the image of the FedEx logo in my show notes which you can get at mydigitalfarmer.com forward slash 32. But if you can just quick find it, do a quick search on Google, take a look at the FedEx logo. And I want to ask you, what do you see when you look at the FedEx logo? Now, you might be like, what do you mean? What do I see? I see the word FedEx. Now, listen, if you go to a child who's like three years old, four years old, who hasn't started going to preschool yet, they haven't learned the alphabet or their letters, and you show them the FedEx logo, you know what they're going to say? If you say, what do you see when you look at this? They're going to say, I see an arrow. Now, I know that I just blew a lot of your minds up right now because you're like, what? There's an arrow in the FedEx logo? Oh, my friends, there is. When I first heard this story, I was like, you are kidding me. And I went and looked at it. I stared at the FedEx logo for like 20 seconds. I still couldn't see the arrow until my eyes suddenly did this weird shift. I had to kind of like, I don't know, squint my eyes so everything got a little fuzzy and look at the negative space in the logo. And suddenly the arrow popped out. So go do that right now because it's really, really cool. And it's just kind of a fun story to share when you're hanging out with your family. It freaks people out. But why am I telling you this story? Because 
I feel like it's a great example of this principle that sometimes you just need to look at something with a new set of eyes and you get a totally different perspective on things. And I feel like writing surveys, well-written surveys, sending out surveys to your customers and getting those responses back gets you a whole new perspective on how your CSA is doing, how your customer is thinking about your product, um, what they're loving about your product, what they're not loving about your product. You can get a completely different look at your business if you do a good job of writing a great customer survey. Now in 2016, when I first kind of began this journey into marketing and trying to get better at marketing on my own, I I started learning about the power of knowing your ideal customer. That was like the number one thing that was beat into my brain. You've got to know who your ideal customer is and you've got to research them. And so they were telling me, you got to go survey your audience, find your best buyers and ask them the right questions so that you can learn who they are. And then you're going to use that information to attract more of them. So I started surveying my audience with these questions that I had been coached to use. And as soon as I sent it out, I started getting all these responses back. I have a pretty big CSA, like about 400 people. And I had a probably a 60% return rate on those. So I had a lot of responses to work with. And I saw patterns. And I stopped asking the questions that really weren't super helpful. I was asking the great questions that I had been coached to use for marketing purposes. And the amount of information that I got, the kind of information, the quality of responses was incredible. And it changed everything. My husband still talks about that moment being kind of a keystone moment in our development as a farm and that we should have started doing better surveys and researching our customer way sooner in our business. And if we had, we would have been making much better leaps and strides as a business um, earlier on in our career. So um, I am super passionate about this topic. I feel like customer surveys are very important. And too many of us just kind of throw it on, tack it on at the end of the season um, and don't really think about the quality of the questions that we're putting on. Frankly, some of you might not even be doing them at all. And I want to reiterate for you today, I hope one of the main messages of today's episode is please do a customer survey, especially at the end of the season, but maybe even do another one at some other point in the season. And so we're going to talk through some of these seven tips to how do you write a customer survey that's actually helpful, that's going to give you information that you can use and that will really give clarity for you as you move forward, as you make decisions for your marketing, your messaging, but also your product, how you might want to change your product the next season. Okay, so first of all, there is a difference between a good and a bad survey. No, I don't want to say that. There's a difference between a good and a better survey. Um, I used to just kind of throw questions on the survey like, um, hey, uh, on a scale of one to 10, rate the quality of your vegetables in your box. Okay. So, you know, I would get numbers that were somewhere between five and nine um, from all different kinds of people. And I kept asking that question every year, year after year after year. And it was always kind of the same answer. And my husband was like, why do we keep asking that question? Like we're, we've only got 10 questions that we're going to use. Cause I don't want to, you know, overwhelm people. I want to make them actually do the survey. So I try to keep it short. It's like, why do we keep asking something that we know the answer to? I'm like, Oh, that's a really good point. So you know, the difference between a good and a better survey, like it's all in the questions that you ask. What intel do you want to get out of this survey? So my first kind of tip for how to write a really great customer survey that's going to actually help you is to ask the question, first of all, who is my target audience? Who is my target audience? So before I sit down and start framing the questions, you have the power to decide who am I, who am I actually trying to get intel from? Do you want to send this survey to all of your CSA members or do you want to segment it? Do you want to get information from just your rookies who have only been in there for a year? Maybe you have very special questions that you want to ask them because you want to know what the experience is like for a first year. And asking those questions in a general survey for everyone 
um, is going to give you such a mixed bag of answers. It's going to dilute the responses. So maybe it's valuable to actually send a survey just to your rookies that's really designed just for them. Um, or maybe you want to send a survey that's just to your master members or the, the members who've been with you a really long time. Are there special questions for them that really wouldn't be relevant for someone who's only been in there a year? And it would kind of jumble your responses if you smush them all together in the same question or in the same survey. It's something to think about. I've always just sent it out to everyone. And this year, I'm actually thinking about sending it out two different end of year customer surveys and one version goes to my members who've been with me a long time and one is going to people who've only been in it for this year because I think that there's different information that I want to glean from those different audiences. Maybe you even have a site specific survey. Maybe your target audience is, well, I want to see, you know, what were people's experience at um, this site over here versus this site. So that's another way that you can think about breaking out your survey. So always ask that question, who is my target audience? That's where you need to start because then it's going to totally change how you ask. It's, it's going to change the types of questions that you put into that survey. Okay. So that's kind of tip number one to start there. Then the second tip is to ask, what is the goal of this survey? What is the intention of the survey? That's always a fabulous question to ask before you do any kind of content, frankly. What is the intention? What's the target that I'm trying to hit? Am I just trying to do a quick answer, you know, a Q&A, like I just want some very simple black and white answers to questions? Um, or, or is this going to be a, a survey that's really designed to do some customer research, like marketing research? Those are a completely different type of question than, you know, just the, hey, what did you think of the fruit share? Was there enough fruit in it or not? Like, that's more of a quantitative question. Um, but if you want to get inside the head of your customer and understand why they're buying from you, you're going to ask completely different kinds of questions. So what is the goal of the survey? You may not feel like you need to do any customer research for marketing. And so in that case, you're going to ask totally different questions. Maybe it is about the quality of the box and how was your experience at the pickup site? How was the customer service? Um, are you reading my newsletter? What's the best way I can communicate with you? I mean, maybe you just want to know black and white answers like that. Um, but if you want to actually get into the head of your customer and do research, you got to know that going in because that's going to that's gonna frame your whole survey. It's going to change how you approach it. Okay? So I also always give this advice that you want to get helpful information that you're actually going to be able to do something with. And my husband, I always have him take a look at these before I send them because he is so good at spotting this. Every year I feel like I have one question on that survey where he's like, why are you asking this? Um, we don't, do we like, I'm like, well, I'm, I'm curious. I want to know. And he's like, well, what if, so what if you get an answer? Like, we're not going to be able to do anything with that response. Even if they tell you that, you know, they don't like X, Y, or Z, I'm still going to put X, Y, or Z in the box. Like, you know, this is not information that we really need to know. Okay. So, um, another example would be what I said earlier in the, in the podcast episode where I used to ask the question, like, what vegetable would you like to see less of in your box? Like, I really don't need to keep asking that question because I always get the same answer. It's always arugula, um, mescaline mix, and like, what's the other one? Like radishes and broccoli leaves and kale. Like those are things that come up again and again. And you know what? I don't, I don't really, I don't want to say I don't care, but like I take that feedback. I know that's what they're going to say. So why why do I need to keep putting that out there, right? So just ask yourself, um, what kind of questions can I ask because I want to get helpful information that I'm actually going to be able to do something with. All right, next tip. Use open-ended questions as much as possible on your survey. Now, I typically only like to do 10 questions. If I can do even less, that's better. If you go over 10 questions, I feel like the number of people that will actually finish your survey drops off dramatically. So if I only have 10 questions, I have to be really selective about the kinds of questions I'm asking. And frankly, the ones that are most valuable are the ones that are open-ended, where they have to answer in some kind of a short paragraph form. And here's why open-ended questions are, are, are so, so powerful, because you want words. You want the copy from your customer. You want them to type as much stuff as possible into that response bar because you're going to see phrases and sentences that will help you get into the head of your customer. So an open-ended question 
is um, a question that starts with how or why or what. Um, it's not a yes or no question. A yes or no question would be what's called a closed question. Like, did you like the quality of your CSA box? Yes. Okay. Well, yes doesn't give me a whole lot to go with, right? But if you st stated like, um, what three words would you use to describe um, your vegetable box each week? Well, now I'm getting a lot more interesting responses and I can use some of those words or those adjectives in some of my copy on my website. Do you see the difference? So you want the copy, you want to ask questions that allow someone to write several sentences. Um, here's another great example. Um, like we're curious, what is the main reason you wanted to join our CSA farm? Oh my gosh, I always get such fascinating responses when I ask that question of my rookies. And I see patterns. I see the same kinds of answers show up again and again. And that helps me know, okay, if that's what most of my ideal customers are saying, then I'm going to put that somewhere on my website or in my email copy because then it's going to resonate with other people like my ideal customer, right? And it's going to make them want to, to join and come into my tribe. So um, another great example is like, what was your favorite part of the CSA experience this season? Wow, not only does that help me see like what the strengths are of my program, but I'll see patterns, I'll see phrases that show up again and again, and I can use those phrases on my marketing assets. I can highlight those things as the benefits of my program. Because remember, I'm not just selling a box of vegetables. I am selling a transformation. I'm selling an experience. And so I want to be able to express that in the words of my own customers. So open-ended questions give you so much intel right from the words, or right straight from the horse's mouth. And you can pull them, literally just cut and paste them and stick them onto your website. Okay, my next tip is when you're writing great customer surveys, you want to try and write questions that will help you get testimonials. So what do I mean by this? Um, trying to come up with questions that will essentially allow a person to tell you why they love your CSA so much or what they loved so much about it this year. Not only does this help you see what the most valuable parts are in your CSA, like what's moving the needle forward in terms of building loyalty, but there is power in a customer actually saying, I love your CSA. It's one of the stages in the customer value journey. If you haven't listened to that episode, I think it was episode three of the podcast. I consider it probably the most important episode that you should listen to if you're just beginning to learn about marketing. It's the framework for how customers turn into brand ambassadors. There are eight stages they have to go through in order to get to that nirvana land of brand ambassador. And one of the stages is a testimonial stage where they give a testimonial and say, I love your farm. And something happens in the brain. I talk about this a lot. In the testimonial phase, there is a shift that happens in the neurons of your brain. When you say, I love XYZ, I love your farm and here's why, it now becomes much more difficult for them to backpedal later on and say, I no longer want to be a part of this because of just psychology and this desire that we have to keep our commitments that we have stated out loud or written down. So the process of getting someone to write a few sentences that essentially say why they love your farm and give a testimonial is not just helpful for you because now you've got you know, some nice sentences for testimonials, but even more important, it's actually giving the customer that opportunity to walk through that stage in the customer value journey. So that is another huge tip, um, trying to find a way to get them to say what, what they loved about your farm, why they love it so much. All right, my next tip, tip number five, try to create questions that identify the, the transformation that your product created in their life. This is similar to the one right before. Uh, it's kind of about writing testimonials, but you want to know what is it that our CSA did for you this year? Like, what did you learn? How did you grow? What was the greatest value for you? You want to get them to identify it. Again, you're going to see patterns when you ask questions like this, and it's going to help you see what the heck am I selling? If you're struggling to figure that out, 
This question is going to give you the answer. If you have a lot of people in your CSA and half of them write back and of those half, like, 60% keep saying the same two or three things, boom, you know what it is that you are selling. You're not just selling fresh vegetables, but you're selling what? X, Y, Z. Um, I'm selling, you know, I'm changing the way people eat. That's what I'm selling um, deep down. I am selling a relationship with a farmer. That's definitely something that I'm selling. So, I'm selling peace of mind that they know where their food comes from, okay? You're going to see these phrases that come back and that's going to help you understand what your life transformation is. What you can it's almost like your promise, the promise of your product, and when you know that, it becomes a lot easier for you to find the tagline for your business. So, that's another great tip as you're creating a survey. Just be looking for questions, open-ended questions that will help you discover the life transformation that's happening. What's help? How is your product actually helping your customer specifically? Now, your um, surveys should also help you get answers to what I call those black and white questions that just you just kind of need to know the answer to. So this year, there's always a few just yes or I don't want to say yes or no questions, but um, questions that have to do with systems or product or quality that I just really need to know how things went. So for example, this season. Um, we internally kind of struggled a little bit with our fruit share, with our fruit bag, because we, although the quality was amazing, we weren't sure if the volume was the right volume for our customers. Um, I was always trying to figure out, okay, I know this is how much they paid for the bag, and this is my cost of goods sold. I want to make sure that I'm still making a profit on this. So do they, is, is what I'm giving them enough? There's always trying to find that right balance of not too much fruit, but the right amount of fruit. So they feel like it was a good value. And because we moved to a new vendor this year and we had a different system, I just wasn't sure. It wasn't the way I'd always done it. And there were some weeks where I was like, oh, I wish there'd been more stuff in the bag. But I hadn't heard a peep from anyone all season. No complaints from any of my customers. But in my mind, I'm thinking, I feel like it fell short. So I need to find a way this year in my survey to figure out the answer to that question. Do people, did people like the fruit share? And I'm not going to ask it like that because then I'll just get a yes or no. I want to know some more details, but I'm going to have to come up with an open-ended question that tries to help me understand if, if they felt like it was an awesome experience or not, or if they noticed anything off about it. Another thing that I really want to know the answer to is, are people reading my newsletter that goes out every week? Um, how often are they opening that email or how often are they clicking to the blog post that I spend, you know, four hours a week carefully crafting and putting together? Do they start out strong and then kind of bleep out at the end? I mean, I, I just want to know that because if they're not really using that piece of marketing asset that I spend so much time on every week, then maybe I need to think about shifting how I communicate with them. And maybe it's okay to um, change how I do newsletter next season. So that is a question that I would consider like a black or white question that I just need to know the answer to. It's not so much about marketing or understanding the messaging of my product. Okay, another tip here is to um, use your survey to help you identify roadblocks that your customers experienced during their season. So, you know, what do you need, what do we need to do better is a good question. Or, um, you know, if you were gonna ask rookies and just send this this survey to rookies, you might wanna kind of ask some questions, um, even on like how, how was, trying to get, trying to figure out like how was your experience learning how to use the stuff? Like, do you feel like you were supported? Was there enough coaching? Were there questions that you had in the buying process early on? Were you confused? Where were you confused? Like trying to just figure out how can I better navigate and guide my first year members? There's so many types of questions that you could ask there um, all around this idea of roadblocks. Like what was it that was tripping you up this year? Where were you struggling? And this information, again, you're going to see patterns. I promise you, if you send this out to a large number of people and you, even if you only just get 30% of them to respond, you're still going to see similar responses coming up. And that's going to guide you for, okay, what do I need to fix system-wise in my CSA? Maybe it's like a lot of complaints. One year we had complaints about parking, that the parking was a hot mess at our home farm. And so we had to come up with a, a solution for that the next year. 
Um, so sometimes it's about your systems and processes, uh, but sometimes it's about, hey, I don't know how to use, you know, I just felt like I was swimming in peppers or I was really getting sick of greens and I just ended up throwing a lot of them away. So that just helps me know, okay, next year I either need to adjust the greens production a little bit or I need to do a better job of training and challenging my, my, uh, my students, my customers, for how to use that product better. Because there are a lot of exit strategies to be able to freeze and store that stuff away. So it just gives me an idea for content creation and support for the next season. And I can sit down with my community manager and my CSA coach and we can come up with ideas based on the feedback from this survey. Okay, so those are my seven tips to writing a better customer survey. Let me review them real quick. Again, number one is asking who is my target audience, being clear about that before you start. Number two, asking what is the goal, what is the intention of the survey? And number three, use open-ended questions as much as possible because you want the copy, right? We don't want yes or no questions. You can have a few, but um, those aren't really going to help you as much as open-ended questions. Number four, get testimonials. Find, find ways to ask questions that will help you get testimonials. Number five, ask questions that allow you to identify the life transformation that your product delivers. What is the promise of your product? Ask questions that help you just get answers to those black and white questions that you need to know. Um, ask questions that identify the roadblocks for your customers. Okay? So, uh, did I say? Yeah, seven tips. I almost I was like, wait, did that say 10 tips? Seven tips. Okay. Now, before I let you go, I want to just talk to you a little bit about how do you take this survey and do something helpful with it? All right. How to read the survey results. This is an important discussion to have because I made the mistake in my early years of taking the responses way too personally. And I would get upset because there's invariably several people who have some negative things to say. And then you get all icky inside and you get defensive. And it's like we completely ignore the 95% of people in the surveys who said your product was great. So I have learned a few things about how to go about reading the survey. And I just want to share that with you. So I usually give people about three weeks to finish the survey. And I definitely give them a deadline. If you don't close the time when the survey, you know, when the surveys do, they will, a lot of them will never fill it out. So I tell them, hey, this is when I need it in. I'll remind them several times. Okay, last chance to, to give me your feedback because I do take that to heart and we'll change things based on what you say. And um, when I have those survey results, I then sit on them. I wait. I don't open them right away. I pick the right time. So I'm usually exhausted at the end of the season. And that is not the time for me to go and read through all that. So we'll usually wait about three weeks, three to four weeks after the end of the season when we're ready to kind of turn things back on in our minds and we get into the right mindset. So I always tell my husband, I'm like, okay, listen, there's going to be some people who have something to say that's going to be hard. And we just need to realize that's going to happen and just prepare ourselves mentally. Um, and then I always remember to filter those negative comments if there's only a few of them, I always just say, you know what? This is not something that I am going to read super seriously. Like I'm going to take it, but I'm going to take it with a grain of salt. Now, if I hear the same negative feedback over and over and over again on a certain topic, that's when my husband and I take notice and we're like, okay, this is a problem for many of our customers. But I want you to remember that not everyone who fills out your survey especially if you're, if you're sending your survey to everyone in your CSA, not everyone in your CSA is, your, is an ideal customer. There are people who are not a good fit, who are going to drop out and not join again next year. And those people are probably uh, people who are not your ideal customer. And so we don't necessarily need to listen to that feedback as much as we need to listen to the ones who love our stuff, who are um, a perfect match for us. We're not going to shift our entire program um, because of, you know, a small percentage of people who really don't fit our model. So a good example of this for me, like we're a, a traditional CSA and you get what you get and you don't get upset. So I don't have this, oh, pick your own, customize your box. 
We don't do that. And there are CSAs, there is a CSA locally that does do that, and that's their mojo. They use Harvey. And so they're attracting a certain kind of customer base that's a little bit different than ours. We're attracting someone who's going to be okay with just being creative in the kitchen based on whatever we give them. So when every now and then, I mean, I do have people that try our CSA out who are honestly probably better suited for that other CSA across town that's using Harvey that would wants to be able to customize their box. And so of course they're going to write in their survey results that they didn't, you know, all, they didn't like all the stuff in our box or they wish they'd had more of this. And what about this? And so when I read those responses, you know, I'm going to sit there and say, you know what, this is just somebody who doesn't fit our model. And so instead of shifting my whole system so that I give everyone choice in what they want in their box because of these few comments that are making it sound like that, I'm going to stick to my guns and realize, you know what, the majority of my customers like the way we're doing it and I, that's who I'm attracting. And so some of these people are probably just going to to drop out and maybe they'll find that other CSA that fits them better. So that's just kind of a, an example where you need to filter the negative comments and ask yourself the question like, is this my ideal client that's that's talking to me right now? Because if they're not, if I know who my ideal customer is like, and, and they're not really fitting it or they're complaining about the thing that shows that they're not a good fit, then, then I'm not going to be as concerned about this feedback. Okay, so when you're reading your surveys, you are looking for the trends and the patterns. You're going to see the same kinds of things show up. I promise you, it's super cool. It's, it's almost like light bulbs to start going off in your head. And I actually pull out a highlighter and I will highlight responses that are similar phrases. And I almost like count them. It's like, okay, well, these are the phrases that are getting said again and again and again. And that's how I know that these are the buzzwords that I need to use when I'm talking about my product. Um, I remember that there was also a, a phrase one time that only one person said, but it was so beautiful that I said, I've got to steal that. It was something like, um, it's like opening, getting my, my CSA box every week. It's like Christmas every week. And I just thought, oh, that's so awesome. I love that metaphor. I love that image. Because the minute I say that out loud to someone, it just evokes a, a word story for someone that, that everyone would immediately connect with. And so I actually pulled that phrase out and I have that sitting on my website right now as one of the header images or header um, titles. So look for phrases like that too that just jump out at you because um, those can be really powerful word stories that people will resonate with. All right, you guys, surveys are important. I, I hope that this episode encouraged you to actually do one this season and to really spend some time thinking about the quality of questions that you could use. These surveys are not only helpful for you because it gives you good intel on your customer, they're helpful for your customer. There are customers in your tribe who want to share feedback with you, who had something uh, they wanted to let you know about some kind of constructive criticism and they would welcome an opportunity to be able to talk to you. They're not going to feel comfortable just walking up and being like, hey, you know what? It would have been really awesome if you could have like figured out there's just too much parking congestion. And, you know, I just don't know how to find a way to let you know that. But if you give them a survey, an opportunity to share with you some of their their positives and negatives, there are people that are looking for that and waiting for that. So this is a uh, a gift you are giving to your customers, a chance for them to wow you with their positive feedback, but also to say, hey, let me know what I can work on because I do actually want to serve you better. All right, you guys, I hope that this episode has convinced you that doing customer research is really important. The minute you understand your ideal client and you really can get into their head and know what makes them tick, you are going to be able to use that information to help you find more of your ideal clients. It's going to be a game changer for you. It's also going to clarify how you need to create content the next year. What do you need to be teaching them? How can you better serve them? What element or product or feature could you add into your product suite or into your uh, CSA package to help them get to that life transformation that they're seeking. Maybe you need to add a Facebook group because they need a way to connect with one another. Uh, maybe you need to add a few video unboxings every week because that will help them learn how to store the product better. So you're, you're going to get such valuable information from doing a great survey. 
Now, if you want to learn more about how to write a powerful survey, I have a course called Customer Research Bootcamp. I don't even want to call it a course because it's really short. It's like a workshop. Um, it's, it's a step-by-step process that teaches you the customer research strategies that a lot of the big marketing companies use to get to know who their ideal clients are. And there's kind of two out of the 10 that I think are really powerful. One of them is surveys. The other one is how to do great interviews, live interviews with your ideal clients. And I basically walk you through how do you figure out how to do these strategies. And it's really step-by-step. I give you great questions that you can actually use. And over the course of that time together in that workshop, I, uh, I literally show you, I want you to do this. Now, here's your homework. Go and work on this. Come back and do the next lesson with me and we'll be ready for the next step. So in about three weeks, when you come to the end of that workshop, you have a customer avatar profile sheet that is detailed, that is helpful. So you have a really good idea of who you are serving and it's just going to make it so much easier for you when it's time to rework your website or create copy for your emails or when you sit down to write email sales copy and you have no idea what to say. You're going to be able to picture who your ideal customer avatar is once you've done this research boot camp. So Um, I felt like out of all the things that I could teach kind of at the fundamentals level, I felt like this is one of those topics that I needed to address. And so that's where I started here. I made a short workshop. It's called Customer Research Bootcamp. If you've got some time this winter and you want to invest in your marketing mojo as part of your continuing education, it's a very affordable price. You can go to mydigitalfarmer.com forward slash research and um learn all about what's in there. I think it's it's a really valuable, affordable program. I think it's going to have big returns for you, um, especially if you are starting in your journey as a CSA farm or you are kind of feel like you're spinning your wheels and you're not really sure what you're doing. Definitely a great place to start. All right. If you want to find the show notes for this episode, you can go to mydigitalfarmer.com forward slash 32. And my challenge to you today after listening to this episode is to craft a survey for your customers using the principles and tips that I've shared with you in this episode. I want you to try and send that off in the next week. Can you get that together in seven days? I think you can. Use Google Docs or, or Google um, Google Forms. Super easy and free. Send it off to your members and you are going to get some amazing results. I promise you. Thanks so much for joining me today. If you enjoyed this episode, please hit the subscribe button and I will be in your podcast player next week. Same time, same place. Have a great week. I'll talk to you soon, guys. Bye.